take a moment and think of the cells in the body as an orchestra. No conductor is needed because each cell intuitively knows the score within it. The various cells of the body play their parts or are quiet as the score dictates. The cells have a finite time to play in the orchestra as a musician often has a limited engagement. Each cell plays the part as written in the score and the end result is a stable, harmonious melody within the body. At some point, however, at a specific site in the body, in a single cell, the score begins to change. These changes can be caused by age, by genetics, or by external influences such as exposure, exposure to carcinogens. These new changes in the score are not compatible with the original melody. As the score changes, so does the cell. The cancer cell plays when it shouldn't and won't stop when it should. It divides to create more cancer cells, and with each division, the new score becomes more unstable. Over a period of time, the progeny fill the local orchestra hall and become a tumor. The cancer cells in the tumor evolve, and the tumor adapts to play many of the instruments needed for the new melody. For those parts that it can't play, the tumor is able to recruit normal cells to its orchestra. The cancer cells act as the conductor and direct the normal cells to start playing the new score. The cancer cells have the ability to play in the orchestra forever, but the current orchestra hall is bursting at the seams. Some of the cancer cells squeeze out of the crowded hall and set up new Similarly chaotic orchestras playing in other parts of the body. Graphically, a tumor and its microenvironment look like this. And it was similar to what Charlotte um, previously told us. Uh, cancer cells cannot survive on their own. They need to be part of an environment. Uh, the bulk of the tumor is composed of the gray cells, the cancer cells, but also present are the various other previously normal cells of the body that the tumor has recruited to carry out its growth and conquer agenda. We can see the cancer cells starting to change shape to facilitate invasion of the surrounding tissue and to start a secondary tumor at a new site. The analogy of an orchestra of send cells gone wild in the body is designed to illustrate that cancer cells behave very differently from normal cells. And while there are many types of cancer cells, all cancer cells share common characteristics or hallmarks. These were first classified in 2000 by two scientists, Douglas Hanahan and Robert Weinberg, who studied the research literature on cancer up until that date and concluded that six hallmarks are absolutely necessary for the transformation of normal cells to cancerous ones. Normal tissues control cell growth and division through careful release of growth signals to growth signal receptors on their cell surface. Cancer cells are able to deregulate these growth signals through a variety of methods. They may, may begin to overproduce the signals themselves, they may direct the recruited cells to produce them. And in some cases, the cancer cell is able to modify its own cell membrane so that the growth receptor on the membrane is permanently turned on. Regardless of the method, the consequence is the same. Uncontro uncontrolled growth and proliferation resulting in a cancerous clone of cells or tumor. Normal cells are governed by a second system to counteract uncontrolled growth and division. Each cell possesses pathways that negatively regulate cell proliferation. In other words, a cellular stop sign for growth and division. Through various mechanisms, cancer cells are able to circumvent the stop signs and continue to grow and divide unchecked. Normal cells are only able to pass through a limited number 
of successive growth and division cycles before dying. And this is believed to be due to continued erosion at the ends of the chromosomes, and this happens during cell division. With repetitive replication and division, the chromosome ends become worn away. The cell can no longer divide, and it dies. Cancer cells, however, produce an enzyme that maintains the ends of the chromosomes, and it therefore allowing infinite cell division. Tumors require nutrients and oxygen, as well as removal of waste and carbon dioxide, much the same as their normal counterparts. To do this, cancer cells rely on the development of new veins and capillaries, a process known as angiogenesis. With a few exceptions, the adult body has turned off its angiogenic switch. It no longer needs to produce extravasculature. In contrast, in tumor cells, the switch is almost always turned on. This allows for the continuous growth of new vessels to feed the growing tumor. When normal cells demonstrate atypical behavior, such as uncontrolled growth and division, a self-directed cellular suicide program, known as apoptosis, is set into motion. The cancer cell literally destroys itself and is subsequently ingested by scavenger cells in the body. Cancer cells employ a variety of strat strategies to evade this cellular suicide. As cancer cells evolve, they acquire the ability to invade the surrounding tissue and then to move between the cell-to-cell -cell junctions of the circulatory system into the blood and lymphatic vessels, a process known as intravasation. The vessels then act as a subway system, transporting the cells to different and distant tissues. The cancer cells then move out of the vessels and take up residence in a new site, spawning a secondary tumor. Since the characterization of the six hallmarks in 2000, ongoing uh, cancer research has led the same two scientists, Hanahan and Weinberg, to propose the addition of two new hallmarks for cancer development. The first is the ability of cancer cells to reprogram their metabolism, and they do this to provide the building blocks necessary for assembling the multitude of new tumor cells. The second is the ability of cancer cells to evade the body's immune system, and we don't completely understand why uh, the body does not recognize these cells as foreign. Although continued experimentation will be necessary to further illuminate the role of these um, hallmarks in cancer progression, they undoubtedly provide additional complexity to the tumorigenic program. Now, given that we have identified the hallmarks necessary for the transformation of normal cells to cancer cells, the solution to preventing or to cure cancer would seem intuitive. Simply knock out one or perhaps two of the enabling hallmarks and we should be able to stop the cancerous program from moving forward. So why haven't we cured cancer? Because in reality, the hallmarks are not governed by a simple cause and effect uh, program as, as I showed in the slide previously. The cancer cell is intelligent, it's highly capable, and it's able to evolve due to the instability of its score or DNA. The simplest circuitries of the cancer cells actually look something like this. Now we can see, oh, we can see the hallmark capabilities are inside the cell. These are the pathways that bring those into fruition. So the circuitry is composed of several subcircuits, shown here as the different colored fields. These subcircuits are composed of many separate pathways and may act alone or in concert with other subcircuits to orchestrate the various hallmarks that we see in cancerous cells. If one subcircuit or pathway becomes disabled, say by a cancer treatment, another pathway can be used to generate the end hallmark. The initial signals 
that activate the subcircuits can come from two different sources within the cancerous cell or from outside the cell. In summary, the cancer cell has many avenues to evade death by therapeutic treatments. Furthermore, there's not only just one cancer. There are over 200 types of cancer. So potentially, we are looking at over 200 variations of the previously shown cell circuitry that need to be elucidated before we can fully understand the scope of cancer biology. Now, all this seems very doom and gloom. The truth is, however, that we have made great strides forward, as indicated by the recent statistics uh, released by the Canadian Cancer Society and Statistics Canada. So the graph shows that there's been a uh, steady, slow but steady rise of cancer over the last 29 years. <clears throat> However, that's due to the population increase in Canada during that time, and also due to the fact that cancer is a disease of the aged. The majority of the population in Canada are baby boomers, and they are reaching their 70s now. The most important message of the graph, however, is that the mortality rate of cancer in Canada is declining. Less people are dying of the disease. And cancer patients are living longer with their disease than ever before. The fact that we are not only able to identify uh, the hallmarks behind cancer, uh, but also the cell circuitry behind them indicates that we are beginning to understand the biology of cancer. We no longer rely on treatment of cancer by radical surgeries or blanket chemotherapy regimens. With our new knowledge, we are able to look at an individual's specific cancer at a molecular level. For example, the presence or absence of a marker on the cell surface of a breast cancer cell. And with that information, we will know what kind of treatment will and will not be successful. The clinician can then direct the proper course of treatment for that specific patient, be it surgery, chemotherapy, treatment with small molecule inhibitors, monoclonal antibodies, radiation, or a combination of these. It's called personalized medicine. In the case of breast cancer, 30% less of the women diagnosed today will die of the disease than if they were diagnosed in 1986. Personalized medicine will play a key role in the design of treatment strategies in the years to come. As winter eternally advances to spring, and thankfully, if you're from Edmonton, it advances to spring, <laughs> cancer research continues to progress. We have some wonderful model systems to work with, immortalized cell lines, genetically engineered cells, and genetically modified animals. We have a momentum in the research community right now, fueled by, among other things, the Human Genome Project. We have mapped the human genome, and now several cancer genomes have also been sequenced. For the first time, we can compare the normal genome to its cancerous counterpart and actually see the differences in the DNA sequence. To most effectively carry out cancer research, however, we need to study human tissues. And for that, we need samples from cancer patients. It is my most sincere wish that each of you will not be faced with the diagnosis of cancer. If, however, you are, please consider participating in a research program. Ask your oncologist if he or she knows of a local program that uh, involves your specific type of cancer, or there may be an international program. Ask more questions and find out what your participation would involve. Research samples are routinely collected at the same time that diagnostic or therapeutic monitoring samples would be collected. Rarely is a sample taken that would require an additional lab or hospital visit. You would remain anonymous in any publications that might arise from the research program. Your personal contribution could prove invaluable and may mean that at some time, another person 
will not have to face a cancer diagnosis with such trepidation. I study a fatal bone cancer called multiple myeloma. My research from the last 10 years revolves, revolves, involves sorry, solely the study of cells isolated from the blood and bone marrow of patients. Without the generous participation of the cancer patients seen in our myeloma clinic, there would be no research program. Globally, over the last 15 years, we have seen the life expectancy of myeloma patients rise from one to three years to five years. And in some cases, patients are surviving 10 years. And remarkably, rare patients actually appear to be disease-free following the new treatment reg regimens that we have. So while we may not cure cancer, in the future, it will be treatable. Instead of a disease that we die from, cancer will become a diagnosis that we all will be able to live with. Thank you.